I'm going to tell you about BadgerSeq and our initial work in getting it up and running. Um, and BadgerSeq was designed to address a major challenge in neonatology, which is how can neonatologists and other clinicians diagnose critically ill children in the NICU who might have a rare genetic disorder or birth defect? Uh, about 2 or 3% of children will have a rare genetic disorder or birth defect. And if you look at NICU patients, about 20 to 25% of them will have a rare genetic disorder. These are patients who are high acuity, they have increased mortality, and they stay a long time in the NICU. Diagnosis is critical for understanding the prognosis and optimizing treatment for these children, and also for estimating recurrence risks for their parents. Um, and we found that the majority of molecular diagnoses will change NICU care. And the faster we do the diagnosis, the greater the impact on care and the greater the reduction in healthcare costs. And time is short. NICU stays average two to three weeks. So over the last 10 years, we've gone from proof of principle, as far as rapid sequencing in the NICU, to clinical care. But there are still major gaps. Uh, one of the gaps is equity. NICUs that lack genetic services rarely order exomes and genomes on their patients. Speed. We talk about rapid sequencing, but it's not infrequent for rapid sequencing to take two to three weeks from the time a patient first presents to the time you get the initial result from the diagnostic lab. And there's also an issue of reach. Current short read technology misses many clinically important variants. So the, the result is the majority of critically ill infants don't get the full benefits of what we could offer them as far as rapid genome sequencing. And so BadgerSeq is designed to address these issues. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about rapid first and timing. So a local example, our pediatric hospital, AFCH, is taking 17 to 19 days from the time of presentation to the laboratory result on our critically ill babies. <clears throat> And the reason why that journey takes so long is it's made of a number of different parts. The first step is that the neonatologists have to recognize that a patient in their NICU needs to be evaluated by a geneticist. Then the geneticist has to make the visit, evaluate the child, and make the decision to initiate sequencing. Then you have to consent the parents. Then you have to take the samples and ship them overnight to the diagnostic lab, which is external. And that then and only then can the turnaround time clock start ticking on the diagnostic test. And in aggregate, this journey is taking two to three weeks for us. So how could we make it faster? Well, we could use a faster laboratory turnaround time. There are laboratories in the US that will offer seven-day turnaround time. That would get us down to maybe 10 to 12 weeks, under two weeks. Or we could pay extra money for a certain laboratory in California that would give us three-day turnaround time. Uh, and that would get our total time down to seven days. But we want to do better than that. <clears throat> so we've designed BadgerSeq to try to get the time down to 72 to 96 hours. And I'm going to tell you about BadgerSeq. But before I do that, I'm going to tell you why is it called BadgerSeq? After all, badger, badgers are small, short-limbed mammals related to weasels. What does that have to do with newborn sequencing? And the answer is, I'm at the University of Wisconsin, and the university mascot is the badger. So that's why it's BadgerSeq. <clears throat> so BadgerSeq takes uh, two innovations. We change how we pick patients, and we change how we sequence them. So picking patients normally is done after a genetic consult. We flip that paradigm so that we are picking our patients before we get the genetic consult. And that is done by nightly data mining of the EMR for all the NICU patients every night for human phenotype ontology terms. These terms are then fed into a machine learning based software program that was developed by Mark Yandel at the University of Utah called the Mendelian Phenotype Search Engine. And that software mimics the diagnostic judgments of clinical geneticists who and ranks the likelihood that NICU patients would be chosen by a geneticist for genome sequencing. Those ranked lists are then reviewed every morning by, the clinical, by clinical geneticists for plausibility, and those patients that pass that QC step are then patients that are put in line for sequencing and for a genetic consult. So the sequencing and the request for the consult start simultaneously. <clears throat> On the sequencing side, 
uh, we flip the paradigm by doing it locally. We don't send out to an to a outside laboratory. And we're doing the sequencing so that it, on our Promethean P24, it's, the sequencing uh, workflow is designed to be done in 48 hours, um, starting with DNA extraction library prep, and then 36 hours of sequencing on the Promethean, uh, running each genome in two flow cells. Uh, so we do six flow cells per trio. Uh, we're doing the base calling and the alignment on the fly on the machine. And then four hours for the secondary bioinformatics. Uh, we're using a modified epitome workflow on a, a local uh, HPC cluster using some of the usual callers. And then the tertiary analysis is done in the cloud at Fabric Genomics. So we take the VCF files, upload them to the cloud, and then Fabric runs its gem-based software, which provides variant annotation and prioritization in terms of clinical significance, as well as, as ACMG-based clinical classification. Those results are then returned to us, uh, and we have several hours for the our local geneticists to look over the fabric data and then uh, finish things up and return the results to the NICU staff. And so the, the design is 72 hours total. Okay, so we've been trialing the sequencing part of this project, which is what I'm gonna to talk to you about now. Um, we took nine trios from our undiagnosed disease program, three positive controls where we knew what the causal variants were, and six patients where the proband had been undiagnosed after short read exome or genome sequencing. Um, in running these trios, we've been averaging three to four hours for library prep time, uh, running the Promethean for 36 hours, two flow cells for genome, getting about 105 gigabytes of data on average, with an N50 of 7.3 kilobases. <clears throat> We've spent four hours on average uh, for the secondary bioinformatics, and then another 60 to 90 minutes to transfer the data up to uh, the cloud at Fabric, and they've been doing their analysis on time, two hours. And the result has been that we have, uh, for these nine trios, uh, the Fabric software identified the three positives and gave us suggestions for three more and then didn't have any suggestions for the remaining three, which was fine, actually, because these were the undiagnosed patients really had already been negative by short read genome sequencing. So I'll give you two examples. Here's one, a five-month-old female with non-immune high drops, seizures, sepsis, and renal failure. The gem analysis ranked compound heterozygote SNVs in the PMM2 gene as their first candidates, and that was the correct pick. Uh, this child has a congenital disorder of glycosylation. Uh, and then here's another example, uh, trio number 11. This was a nine-year-old boy with neonatal hypotonia, failure to thrive, developmental delay, um, who had a prater willi like uh, syndrome. And the gem analysis identified an eight and a half megabase uh, deletion encompassing the prater willi region on chromosome 15Q11, uh, which was, again, the correct diagnosis. So where are we now? Uh, we're confident that our overall goal of 48 hours from DNA to initial variant analysis is, is quite doable. Uh, and we think that the Promethean is a really good choice for this kind of sequencing from the NICU. It's intermittent, it's moderate volume, but when you need it, you need it immediately. It's not the kind of thing you could easily do with your local uh, NovaSeq. 36 hours of sequencing with two flows for genome is providing us with more than 30x coverage. Um, and uh, we're happy with the timing of the bioinformatic alignment. <clears throat> the Fabric software is a good fit for us because it's rapid, AI-assisted, and that rapidity is essential for our time goals. Uh, so what are we doing next? We're improving our workflow. Uh, our goal is higher yield libraries in, in less time. We're uh, trying to streamline the transfer of data from the Promethean to our compute cluster to the cloud. And we're looking forward to trialing the upcoming linkage of Epitome with uh, Fabric software. And I'm out of time, so I'll stop there and just thank members of the Undiagnosed Disease Program back in, at Wisconsin, and also our assistance from the experts at Nanopore and Fabric. Thank you.